93 WIBC, it's Terry, Stacy, and you've been hearing, well, I've been hearing the buzz around the building as uh, my coworkers are preparing for the 7th Annual Monumental Marathon. It's getting closer every day. And joining us now is Blake Bolden. He is the Executive Director of the Monumental Marathon. We're going to talk about what a weekend it's going to be. Good morning, Blake. How are you? Hey, Terry. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. How are you doing this I'm morning? I'm doing fine. And the more I read about this marathon, it is so cool. This is Indiana's largest marathon. There are several different race options, but the growth that you have seen in seven years is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And I think it's a true testament to the Indianapolis and even central Indiana community, not only the desire to get healthier, be fit, but just the, de- the desire and ability to host large-scale national destination events. And it's just thrilling to be a part of it every year. Well, the Runners World, uh, well, Runners World uh, has said it's one of the top 20 fun, feature-filled marathons in the country. And explain what makes this one so special. People just love this course, don't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, number one, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if, if you have been spent, spent time or meaningful time in Indianapolis, grew up here, lived here, went to school here, um, and lived somewhere else in the country, when you come back, you see and run this course. You see everything you remember. Um, I mean, the, the 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 Indianapolis Museum of Art, the State Fairgrounds, Broad Ripple, uh, downtown. You know, we start and finish right at the State Capitol grounds. So, really, if you think of all those things that make Indianapolis uniquely Indianapolis, um, well, we'd have to exclude, exclude the track. But our friends at the 500 Festival take care of that in May, and then. Everything else on that list, we'll see on Saturday, November 1st. You know, I, I bet you picked up a thing or two about how the mini marathon is run and with the cheer groups and everything that happens along the route. That's probably what also makes this just a whole lot of fun for spectators, too. Oh, that's right. And, and I think, too, one thing that's, that's different and separates us is not only the neighborhoods where we run, but also the folks that live along the course many of which who sacrifice their streets and their access to their house on race day, yeah. they know that, that our proceeds support local public education. So in six years, we've donated over a half million dollars to support pu- pu- public schools here in Indy. So That's a big part of it. I mean, that's a really important part of it, I know, for you. It, it's been said that this event, that other events actually, could learn a thing or two about how you've included kids and uh, talk about that monumental kids movement. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Terry. That's very kind. But yes, we we started the program with a pilot program in one school in 2012. Last year, we were able to to expand that to 17 schools throughout the city. This year, uh, we've almost doubled that number, and we have a fitness program currently in place in 29 schools throughout Indianapolis. So these elementary schools are hosting a nine-week program, two days a week, primarily before school, some after school. Um, and then any student that attends 75% of those sessions, we give free in- free entry to our 5K. We also pay for the bus transportation, breakfast at the school that race morning, um, an additional T-shirt for them to all run in so they're easily identifiable. And it's just something that's r- really uh, captured the imagination of those students, parents, teachers. But I-, I think in time, we'll see not only the health benefits of those kids, but I do, I, I do sincerely believe that in five years, 10 years, 20 years, getting 1,000 kids who otherwise may have never run a 5K in their life, running an event, it adds up and will, I think, <clears throat> lead to a cultural shift where people are more active, um, maybe not necessarily running races, but just living a healthier, active lifestyle, walking, taking the stairs, and being out and, and, and being healthier. Yeah, you know, I tell you what, I've talked to those kids. I've talked to some of these kids, and they are – so excited it's given them a goal and uh and something to really look forward to and they're they're just so excited Uh, do you have a number of how many are they going to run it with these uh these kids yeah absolutely uh based on our participation numbers in the schools and attendance so far uh, now now that their ips is on fall break so we've had a chance to catch our breath here um we anticipate over 1,000 students from the from throughout the city that is so awesome that is just awesome how many all together run the race or participate in all the different because you've got lots of options but how many all together participate in the uh, monumental marathon yeah that's right the sellout number for the for the marathon is 5,000 um we we're we're anticipating about 8,000 in the half marathon and then including including the monumental kids movement graduates 
we'll be pushing 3,000 in the in the 5K. So we're in the range of 15 to 16,000 this year. It's a such a cool sight again to see all of you as you take off right around the state capitol. That's where you start and where you kind of end. And yeah, again, there right. there are some really great. Uh, uh, there are there are all different options that you have. Got the mini, or not the mini. You've got the, the what am I doing? The marathon, the half marathon. You've got uh, walks. The kids participate. There's lots of different ways that everybody in the family can participate. And not only that, uh, this will take place on November 1st, but it's really kind of a two-day event with the Health Fitness Expo that even if we're not running or walking or participating, we still go to this Health Expo. Oh, absolutely. Come on down. I mean, and there's there's a, a whole f- full slate of featured speakers. I mean, we have uh, an Olympian who is the uh, author of the best-selling running book ever, Jeff Galloway. He'll be there to talk about um, his running and coaching strategies. Um, and we also have a world record holder uh, for age 91. He's 92 this year, and he's coming back t- to the Monumental with the hopes of setting another world record. Wow. Um, he'll be speaking. We have a six. She's 17 now. Uh, Alana Hadley coming in from Charlotte, North Carolina. Last year at our event at age 16, she ran the marathon and became the youngest qualifier for the Olympic trials marathon in over 30 years. Wow. So it's going to yeah. be, you've got lots to offer is basically you've got a lot to offer, Absolutely. a lot of people to see and a lot happening. Monumentalmarathon.com if you'd like to get uh, more information about what those the, the Health Expo is all about. Because, again, we're all invited to that. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, and, Terry, I do want to point out, too, our, our, our expo and those ex- featured speakers and all of the activities that are going on that day do fall on Halloween, Friday, October 31st. Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh, you've got some kind of um, a trail or something. For That's kids, right. right. Yes, because oh, yeah. I don't want people who hear this to say, oh, no, we can't come down to the marathon. Uh, because, you know, we don't want to miss trick-or-treating. We, we, the kids need to be in a costume. So first and foremost, any, any kid under 12 um, and really up to the first 150, um, we anticipate we'll be able to fulfill all requests. So I guess it depends on how your listeners respond, but up to about 150 <laughs> um, that come to our expo in costume will get 50% off their kids' fun run entry. Um, because that's our fourth race, and it's much smaller, um, but it's just a third of a mile around the state capitol building um, right downtown that morning, Um, but 50% off if they're there in costume. But then we've also partnered with um, an array of attractions and downtown restaurants and hotels to offer um, our first ever and the first of its kind that I know of, um, downtown Indy Trick or Treat Trail. So kids can come down, and IMPD will be on the circle giving candy away. So it should be a lot of fun for families. Oh, I love it. Okay, so that's going to start on the circle. So start on the circle and just follow Perfect. the trail, and there'll be yep. restaurants that will be passing out all kinds of things. So have your Halloween downtown here and with the Monumental Marathon and all that they're doing with the expo. And, um, it, Blake, that's just terrific. It's gonna, It really is a, a, is a two-day event, or am I counting three? Is it two or three? Uh, three, because we start our expo on Thursday. So for those okay. folks who know that they, they've got a trick-or-treat and they've got to have – the kids have to go to Grandma's. Yeah. Um, but they can make it downtown on Thursday evening. We're open from 4 to 7 on Thursday to catch those folks um, who, you know, maybe downtown as work ends or make it down after work uh, and can't be there Friday. But then Thursday, 4 to 7, and then we really get the ground hit the ground running on Friday, and we're open from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. with the expo. And that's a complete with a pasta dinner, the trick-or-treat event, um, speakers starting at noon and going through 6 p.m., Um, So an array of activities and events all day long Friday. And then Saturday we have, of course, the, 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 featured event, the marathon. I mean, that's the one that we're, we're, we're focused on um, 365 days a year. And then, but it corresponds with the start and finish uh, the same start with the half marathon right at 8 a.m. 20 minutes later, the 5k starts at 8 20. Um, and then the kids fun runs at 8 30. And then, so even if, you have no interest in walking and running. I do think it'd be fantastic if we can get that <clears throat> that course lined with spectators, yeah. cheering these folks on who who are here running the race. Of course, to to reach their running goals, but also to to support education. I mean, I think everybody knows that it's running our race. They they know that that the proceeds go to support our schools and improve our city. 
Yep, they, it's really awesome. It really is a terrific event. The seventh annual Monumental Marathon. The growth has been incredible, and uh, people talk about it all over the country and really do say it is one of the most fun and feature-filled fi- feature uh, marathons uh, in the country. So uh, get out there and support these guys. As he said, it's about education, too, is what they're doing. All those kids that are going to be running from uh, the, for, uh, those kids, that's going to be awesome. Okay, I'm going to let you go, Blake. I'd love to have you. you for your time. Well, yeah, thanks a lot. I really mean it. Monumental Marathon. MonumentalMarathon.com for more information. Blake Bolden, Executive Director, thank you so much for your time. We'll see you there. Great. Thank you.